You want to know how important radiators are? Then take a look at how many rules changes NASCAR has made to them lately. Here's how a radiator basically works. Water enters the engine. The engine is really hot. The second law of thermodynamics tells us that heat always moves from warmer objects to cooler objects. So heat moves from the engine to the water, making the engine cooler and the water warmer. A quantity of water can only hold so much heat. If it comes into the engine already warm, it can't take away as much heat from the engine as it could if it were cool. So if the water just kept going around and around, it would heat up and eventually reach the same temperature as the engine, which makes for a pretty lousy cooling system. That's where the radiator comes in. The hot water from the engine enters the radiator. Again, thanks to the second law of thermodynamics, the cooler radiator absorbs heat from the warmer water, so the water leaving the radiator is cool again. It goes back to the engine to pick up some more heat. The water is constantly dumping heat from the engine into the radiator. The heat can't stay there, otherwise the radiator will get hot and then water coming through it will turn into steam. Radiators have hundreds and hundreds of tiny little metal fins. The big surface area they provide allows lots of air molecules to bang into them. You guessed it, via the second law of thermodynamics, heat is transferred from the radiator to the air molecules and out of the car entirely. NASCAR cooling systems are really good. That's why one car can tuck up beneath another, blocking most of the airflow through the radiator, but still keeping the engine cool enough to run. Most of the rules NASCAR is trying out for Daytona have a common goal, decrease the efficiency of the cooling system. They're doing that by decreasing the amount of water in the radiator and decreasing the airflow through the radiator. Theoretically, that should also decrease how long cars can stay in pairs before the engine of the trailing car starts to overheat. The problem, of course, is that theory doesn't always work in reality. It'll be interesting to see what happens in testing and whether they make more rule changes. Next class, I'll be covering similarities between the two-car Tango and Cooper pairs and superconductors.